This is part two of the ionic and covalent general concepts of bonding. So let's look at this chart. And here we have average bond dissociation energies. That is, how much does it cost to break one mole, in this case, of bonds between two hydrogen atoms? It costs 436 kilojoules. Not quite as expensive an energy to break a carbon-hydrogen bond. And these are all single bonds over here until we get to carbon-carbon double bond. To break both bonds requires 607. We'll see that's because there's a sigma bond, which is strong, and a pi bond, which is not quite as strong. So here is a double bond between carbon and oxygen, and then between two oxygen atoms. Now, that takes care of those bonds. We go over here, we get the ones involving nitrogen, and here are the ones involving oxygen. And we also have the carbon fluorine and the carbon sulfur bond. You'll notice that the carbon fluorine bond is extremely endothermic if you want to break it. And you think about that. The fluorine is the most electronegative element we have. If you look at an oxygen chlorine bond uh, versus a Let's see, a carbon fluorine bond, you see that the two highly electronegative atoms, oxygen and chlorine 269, carbon and chlorine 397. Because the, uh, the carbon to chlorine bond is a stronger bond. Okay. Now remember that electronegativity is the ability of an atom and a molecule to attract shared electrons to itself. We talk about not either ionic or covalent. We talk about the covalent or ionic character of a bond. And so we see fluorine is 4.0 and cesium is 0.8. Simply subtract the two here and you get 3.2. 3.2 is here, three, between 3 and 4. Anything between 3 and 4 is essentially 90% plus ionic. There's very little sharing going on. The cesium has given its electron to the fluorine, making a fluoride ion. On the other hand, if you look here, and you see hydrogen and carbon, 2.5 minus 2.1 is 0.2. Four. That is below one. Zero, of course, is entirely covalent, like between hydrogen and hydrogen. And when you see 2.5 minus 2.1 of 0.4 is essentially covalent bond with no ionic character. The carbon and hydrogen are equal, almost equal sharers. The carbon gets a little bit more of the juice. The hydrogen has a little bit less of it. So that gives you kind of the two extremes here. So, polar covalent bonds, the electrons are unequally shared. The electronegativity difference there is between 0.3 and 1.7. If it gets higher than 1.7, then you're getting into a mostly ionic bond. So we're really trying to focus on covalent bonds here. In a nonpolar situation, the electrons are equally shared, like between two chlorine atoms in a Cl2 molecule, or between two hydrogen atoms. That's absolute equal sharing. Even if you've got two fluorine atoms making fluorine gas, that's F2. They're either one, they're both highly electronegative, but they have equal sharing because they're the same atom. The electronegativity difference here is between 0 and 0 0.3. So recapping ionic bonding, as we see, electrons are transferred as from the 3s orbital of sodium to the third energy level of the chlorine, making a chloride anion and a sodium cation here. 
electronegativity differences here are generally greater than 1.7 and forming that bond is always exothermic. Now bond polarity, you can picture a polar bond using what we call partial charges and your SEN gauge does that and tests that. So for instance, HCl, we've got 3 minus 2.1 or 0.9. That is a polar covalent bond between a hydrogen and chlorine atom. What we do is we say the more electronegative has what we call a partial negative charge. This little Greek lowercase delta is partial. And this is a partial positive on the hydrogen, which of course is less electronegative. So the electron cloud is going to be much more around the chlorine than it is going to be around the hydrogen. When they share, they share unequally. If you have an electronegative, now th this is a little bit squishy here, because we said if the difference is between 0 and 0 0.3, it's nonpolar bond. And they say in this particular look, 0 and 0 0.5. The closer it is to 0, the more nonpolar is it. It is. It's polar as a bond between 0.5 and 2. Uh, this number is 1.7 in the previous look, but for sure anything with a difference in electronegativities of 2 is certainly almost entirely ionic. So let's look at HCl, and we'll see it in several different ways. The hydrogen chlorine bond, you've got partial positive on the hydrogen, partial negative on the chlorine. You see here in the electron cloud, it is much denser around the chlorine than it is around the hydrogen because the bonding electrons are attracted more strongly by the electronegative chlorine than by the less electronegative hydrogen bond. So this is a polar covalent bond, symbolized here by a dash, that's how AP likes to see it, symbolized here, of course, by the two dots showing two electrons being shared. Okay, the molecule N2O has three forms, three ways you can draw the Lewis structure. Are any of them more correct than the others? Yeah, it is. but. They can, they can all be drawn that way. So here you have a triple bond between the nitrogen and the oxygen, and a single bond between the two nitrogens. Remember, oxygen is the most electronegative of these atoms. Here you have double bonds between each, and unpaired electrons, four pairs of electrons that are not shared. And here you have one, two, three, four lone pairs with the triple bond between the nitrogens. So which of the, these, I'll say which of these is correct, we want to say which of these is the lowest energy and contributes most to the overall electronic structure. Well that gets into formal charges. And we'll have a we have a separate video on formal charge, but this will give you a good intro to it. Formal charge assumes that the bonding electrons are shared equally. That's not true, because they have different electronegativities. Here's how you calculate the formal charge. It is the number of valence electrons in the, in the bonding. In other words, what have you got? You got two oxygens, you got six valence on one and six valence on the other, uh, and uh, so you've got 12 valence electrons. You subtract the non bonding electrons. Oh, I'm sorry, these are with, with the oxygen, you only have one double bond between them. But this this determines the charge on any given atom. Number of valence electrons minus the number of non-bonding electrons. And then you subtract half of the bonding electrons. So for instance, in N2O, 
this particular configuration, you have a single bond on the nitrogen, triple on the oxygen. Okay. Here you have two, four, six bonding electrons. So on the oxygen, that contributes a three. And you're, so you're going to subtract the three. Oxygen has a total of six valence electrons. So six minus how many non-bonding electrons? Two. And then you have half of this, three. So six minus five is one, plus one. So that's the formal charge on the oxygen. Think about it. Oxygen is highly electronegative. Is it low energy when it has a positive charge? I don't think so. Let's look over here. Now nitrogen has three bonding pairs this way and one this way. So we start off nitrogen as five valence electrons. We're going to subtract the non-bonding. Oh, it doesn't have any non-bonding electrons. All its electrons are being used in bonds. So we've got four pairs of bonding electrons. And so half of that, we're going half of eight is four. So we simply take five valence electrons, subtract the four, and we again get a plus one. Finally, nitrogen has five. Oh, there's one, two, three, four, five, six non-bonding electrons. Five minus six is minus one. But it's also got half of this bond with the other nitrogen. Because one half of two is one. You've got five. Huh, five minus six minus one is minus two. So you've got the most negative over here on the least electronegative atom. Hmm. Doesn't look like a low energy situation. All right. Similarly, we can do the double bond, double bond, and we get a zero on the oxygen. That looks a little bit lower in energy than what we had here. And then we have a plus one on this nitrogen, minus one on that one. I'd like to see the same atom with one has a plus and one has a negative. Hmm. So looking here, oh, this looks better, doesn't it? Here, the oxygen, 6 minus 5 minus 1, gives you a negative 1. I'm sorry, 6 minus 1 minus 2 is negative 1. And now you've got a plus one on the nitrogen, five minus three minus one is plus one. And here your five is offset by one, two, three, four, five. So it's a zero. This is the lowest energy because you've got not opposite charges on the same atom next to each other. You have a zero and a one plus one. And then the most electronegative of the atoms has the bulk of the atoms, with the bulk of the electrons. So, the most favored resonance form is the one that has the smallest formal charges, no formal charges with the same sign on adjacent atoms, negative formal charges on the most electronegative atoms. That's the way to pick out the lowest energy in multiple resonances. So this is the most favorable we have arrived at that. So your turn, assign formal charges to the re three resonance structures of the cyanide ion. We'll let this run, or you can just let it run out at the end of the 15 minutes, and then you can talk to your instructor about what the answer is.